Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 38, and I'm going to discuss spherical polar coordinates. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous video to this is on a separate set of videos altogether. It's on my series on quantum statistics. And in video number 43, I proved all the, uh, the identities required for, for spherical polar coordinates. So that is my full video. So for that reason, I'm going to suggest that you watch this, watch, we'll say, video number 43 on quantum statistics. And what I'm going to do in this video is just do a recap of what I proved in video number 43. So perhaps you're familiar with this, perhaps, perhaps you're not. Okay, so for that reason, like I said, I'm going to be pretty quick. So if we can imagine a rectangular coordinate system where we have i, j, and k, or x, y, and z. Let's say this is y, this is z, and this is x. So if we have our vector going to a point here, okay, there, there's our vector, let's call it point A. Well, we call this angle here theta. So this angle between the z-axis and your vector, we call that theta. If we project our vector down then onto the xy plane, well, it's going to have components as follows. That's parallel to the y-axis. This is parallel to the x-axis. And if you come out then from the origin, to this point, you're going to have the angle phi. Okay, so angle phi we will call the azimuthal angle. So, um, yeah, well, that's that, right? Now, what we do is how to transform from rectangular to polar coordinates is we note that x is equal to r sine theta cos phi something I've proved in, the, in, in, the, in the, the video on quantum statistics. y is equal to r sine theta sine phi. And finally, z is equal to r cos theta. There are the transformations. And if you, if you can look at those pretty, or you can work on it pretty straightforward, provided you realize that, this, that the distance from here to here is the same, as it is down here. Okay, that's the same distance. Okay, and you're able to use Pythagoras as a result up there. All right, so where do we go from here? Well, what we do is we note that any very, any, we'll say, vector can be written as follows. In polar, co oh sorry, in, in rectangular coordinates, it's a sub x in the i hat, it's a sub y in the j hat, and it's a sub z in the k hat direction. But in our spherical polar coordinates, we write it as a sub r in the r hat direction, so that's the radial direction. It's a sub uh, theta in the theta hat direction, and it's a sub phi in the phi hat direction. So phi, like I said, was the azimuthal angle, the one which, which goes around, whereas theta, theta goes, we'll say, theta goes up like that, that's theta, whereas the azimuthal angle phi goes around. So phi usually does 360 degrees, whereas theta usually only goes from 0 to 90. Okay, if you want to do a hemisphere, obviously it goes from 0 to 180 if you want to do a sphere. I'm sure you understand that. So in order to be able to use this particular um, format, we need to come up with, with the unit vectors themselves. So I, like I said, I proved this in the previous video, that r hat is, we'll say, sine theta cos of phi in the uh, in the i hat direction plus sine of theta sine phi in the j hat direction plus cos theta in the k hat direction then theta hat is cos theta cos phi in the i hat direction it's cos theta sine phi in the j hat direction and it's minus sine theta in the k hat direction and finally phi hat the the, the phi is our azimuthal angle is merely negative sine theta in the i hat direction plus cos phi in the j hat direction there is no k hat component so now we're able to write an arbitrary vector A, capital A, in terms of its, uh, in the unit vectors in spherical coordinates. 
And now we're going to, going to show you what's really useful about these spherical coordinates. Because we can integrate, we can do, uh, we can do path integrals, um, where, uh, excuse me, path integrals, surface integrals and volume integrals very easily, provided we realize the following, that the infinitesimal length or change in length in the r hat direction is simply going to be um, dr. Okay, so that's that that should make sense. So we're just and I've explained that in the previous video. However, if we're going in the the infinitesimal change in length due to theta, we're going to be talking about r d theta, and dl phi is going to be equal to r sine theta. Uh, or sine theta d phi. Okay, so that means if you're talking about an area, well, an area you can go, you can either have dl sub r and dl sub uh, sub theta. You have dl sub r, dl sub phi. You could have dl sub phi, dl sub theta. Okay, there are the three combinations you can have. Each of each of them giving you a different in, infinitesimal area element okay so it depends on which variable is constant when you do that so you have three different possible area elements however you've only one particular volume element d tau and that's obviously multiplying dl sub r dl sub theta and dl sub phi together okay so d tau simply is going to be equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi okay so that's that's the infinitesimal volume element. And finally, the infinitesimal length, or change in length, okay, let's call it a vector, they're all vectors. It's going to be dr in the r hat direction, plus r d theta in the theta hat direction, plus r sine theta d phi in the phi hat direction. That's the infinitesimal change in length. Okay, so like, that's all I want to say because it's just a, a revision. So look at video 43 where I've done it. I, I think I've done it in pretty good detail on my quantum statistics series. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com.